I still think Abaturai Sentai Don Brothers is a simulation or a game. Keza? Henshin. So for those who are still around after my conspiracy theory, let me explain. A few months ago when I started this channel, Don Brothers was coming out a few days after my first video, where I discussed the trailer, the cast, and the basic history and inspirations for the new and obscure Sentai. And a theory I came up with while watching the first three episodes was that this was all in a simulation or game. Now you may laugh and say I'm wrong. Listen to my new evidence while I also discuss episodes 4 to 10, and tell me what you think in the comments down below. I will prove it to you! Now just a recap of why I think it is a simulation from the previous episodes to catch everyone up to speed. Number one, when he appears, Momoi Taro is a baby, but appears in a peach from a crack in the sky. Someone placed him into the world to help. This sounds almost isekai-ish with the overpowered main character. He also connects to people like collecting friendship levels. Why? Because it's a game. Number two, it has a digital world with glitchy monsters slash past powers maybe needing to be decoded and saved, hence why Momoi Taro has been inserted with the knowledge and the perfect way to save them. Number three, we have characters we know from before, for example Kaito from the Zenkaija season, but he's different. He is this godly figure that we find out in the next few episodes is the admin that watches over, takes note of what's happening, collects the saved gears, and appears to have the power to change what's happened and how the world happens. And number four, talking about power to change the way the world works, this may be a coincidence, but there are many instances where things change or randomly happen, like Haruka's manga being plagiarized for some reason and Inazuka now being on the run from the police. This stops them from being distracted from their jobs to help Taro as warriors. This world changes around how Taro needs it to be, it seems. So continuing my watch of the series was fun. We got an episode where Kijino has to help an onigiri shop with Momoi Taro, and he does in fact inspire and help with the success of the shop. But we also see the sad past of Momoi Taro as a child, as he thought he was helping people with his knowledge, but he ended up as public enemy number one. Also, something in this episode I want to point out. Momoi Taro's place of work, the White Bear Postage Company, closes down for a while. Now you may think it's not strange, but I do. Suddenly, when he is not needing it, it closes for a few days or weeks. A company who is sending posts out daily, a job that has strikes, yes, but not to this extent, suddenly closes? The world seems to just perfectly fit what Momoi Taro needs, as mentioned before. Next episode, we know more about Inu brother, Inazuka as he continues to run from the police, ending up sitting with all the team without knowing they fight together as fake hostages in the closed postage building, and talking about happiness, and he remembers that it is his birthday today. Everyone sits, eats cake, and sings happy birthday to him. Something about that really made me feel warm inside, but also laugh at the absurdity of the situation. I'm glad it still has this magic. Now, episode six. This is one of two episodes where we hear about and see the effects of the happiness points. Kijino uses his points to better himself after feeling like he is inadequate for his wife. Now, with the use of the points comes along a warning. Excess use of the points can lead to misfortune, and that's what happens. Kijino, after using his points, gets promotions, gets a good car, has money to book a whole restaurant, and learns about the great things about being rich and important, but becomes big-headed along the way and his wife soon falls ill. Kijino finally realizes his mistake and decides to revert back, which, surprise surprise, helps her health. Going back to the points though, this shows the influence of the points over the world and how easy it is to change the reality where Kijino, though terrible at his job, finally gets promotion out of nowhere. Mm like stats in a game. Episode seven, we have the school episode where the principal turns into a rule raging monster with a loop at gear. And if someone does anything wrong, he sucks them into a sheet of paper and sets them on fire to send them to hell. <laughs> but in this episode, we see the start of the friendship between Taro and Sonoi, and that cosmic connection we love to see in these seasons. Transformed, he offers Taro a place on their side, but of course Taro refuses. But I love the start of this connection, which we will comment more on in later episodes. Episode 8 made me feel uncomfortable. Firstly, a red balloon. Hell no! We have an artist running around looking for his muse, who he finds in Miho, Kijino's wife, who he kidnaps. We see a dark side of Kijino in this episode as he stops Taro from finishing the fight to clear the artist, instead letting Sonoi kill him first, which destroys his soul entirely. He did this to protect his wife, saying he would do anything to protect her, but damn, this sweet guy ain't sweet no more. Instead of saving the kidnapper, he got him killed. Dude? Are we about to see evil Pink Ranger? 
On a lighter side, we see the boys meeting untransformed for the first time, not realizing who the other is. And actually, they have a lot in common, also a lot of respect for each other. This feels spicy, and I'm excited but also scared for when they realize their association to each other. We also find out that Kijino's wife, Miho, and Inazuka's girlfriend could be the same person. Or twins? or something of that nature. Just a lot happened in this episode. Again, on a lighter note, we have an episode where Taro is ill and not as perfect as he usually is, flopping around, coughing, and not able to fight. We also have a floating child wanting to play games, and this kid, I think, has the coolest monster form yet. It's so awesome. Just look at it. Anyway, for Taro to get better, there is a cure. Eat 300 kibi dango. I wish I could just eat sweets to feel better, but honestly, after the 11th one, I would probably feel worse. Something about this episode I want to point out for my theory, though, is remember the random people that appear in Red Ranger's appearance parade? The women in white throwing petals with the fans and the men holding up the mini stage. I think these people are just random civilians who are around the area being sucked into his entrance parade on command. But in this episode specifically, because he is ill and doesn't have full control of himself or influence on the world, you see the people in the parade on their phones, in half outfits, almost like the humans who are there are not fully under his control, and are more aware and angry why they are there in the first place. This mainly shows his influence on the world and is highly suspicious if you ask me. Final episode I'll touch on for this video is episode 10. Haruka is told by the admin. The admin of what? The simulation? The game? who we find out is Master, that Haruka has loads of points, and Master says she can wish for anything, and that is what she does, to his surprise. Wishing that her manga was not plagiarized, and just like that, life has reset and changed. A new, more compatible Yellow Ranger, Marina, takes her place, but learning more about Marina and her photography being ruined in the place of Haruka's manga, she officially chooses to prioritize someone's happiness over her own, and demand that Master reverts her wish back. Now think this through. Everyone in this episode forgets who she was, but Master was the only one who remembered her. Also, as I mentioned before, how is this world so easily changed, so easily manipulated to the demand of Taro's or even Master's persuasion? This seems very dodgy to me, and again, we see how flimsy and influential Taro and Master are in this world. But oh well, we get some awesome power-ups. This brings us to the end of the video, where I wrap everything up and state how- How can you not see that there's something going on here? It's a simulation and there's something wrong with Master and Taro and the world! Uh, what was that? No, I haven't yet. What? Uh, tell me the ending anyway. Oh. So that might be why Kaito is different. That's why Kaito has such persuasion over the world as he sets up the events of the show itself into motion as part of his nefarious plans to change the structure of the multiverse in order for it to fit his preferences. Uh, definitely not reading this on the wiki to work out who this god is. But maybe as Hikari is saying, they hadn't destroyed God in that final episode and here he is in Kaito still maybe. All in all, the last few episodes are truly amazing and definitely has that chaotic fun that was so inviting in the first three episodes. It's written well with following episodes mentioned or hinted before it even happens, which has a great flow and has jokes that are referenced from episodes before. For example, the joke of the Rangers trying to take on Taro, starting with Kijino hoping to defeat Taro in either a sumo match, an arm wrestling match, and a thumb war, each scenario playing out in his head leading to his defeat. This is also referenced again when Saruhara wants to take him on too, with the same setup as before, and same defeats against Taro. And reference one small where Taro falls ill and Sarahara has the same thought, but this time in the daydream he does indeed defeat Taro, because of his weakened state. The rule of three gets him every time. These episodes almost feel like there's a meaning or a story to learn from them. Don't judge a book by its cover. Be kind. Don't kidnap people. Well, that's a given, but it makes sense as this season is hugely based on the Japanese folk story, Momotaro and his band of friends going to defeat the demons. So a fable or two with meanings isn't too weird. A few weird things for me though, is that we still have not seen everyone else in the Megazords, nor have we got the whole team knowing the identities of everyone and everyone knowing their identities back. And the CGI of the pink and black ranger have not even gotten any better, maybe even worse. Is this on purpose, as the rest of the CGI is incredible? But the school episode, honestly... Is it charming at this point? Not too sure. But anyway, Master and Taro are definitely weird. 
God or simulation. There's something going on. And if it is a simulation that Master or Taro can control, or God from Zenkaija in Kaito's body, influencing the world as he sees fit as the Master and Admin, we'll work it out. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this theory and the video. I will see you all in the next video. And here, of course, are all my socials. Here's a henshin. Mathanet.